The number one expense that could doom your retirement is not what you think. I'm telling you, I know what you're thinking. It's not that. Everyone thinks this. I'm telling you, it's not. So we're going to look at my man, Sadiptu Banerjee, over at T. Rowe Price. Big fan of Sadiptu. I cite him a lot in my book, You Can Retire on Social Security. I don't cite him in this book, but uh, you should get my You Can Retire on Social Security. Because if you think you can't retire on Social Security, oh, you're... I don't, it's probably not the channel for it. All right, let's just put it that way. Anyway, planning for spending volatility in retirement. Hmm. Data show that spending generally decreases in retirement, but the path of decline can be choppy for many retirees. Non-discretionary spending is a primary source of spending variability in retirement, but this varies with income. All right, so Sadipto looks at some studies he says, hey, we know for a fact that the average retiree spending goes down, not goes up, it goes down, which is what makes the whole basis of the 4% rule uh, premise silly. It doesn't mean it's evil. It just means it's not legit because there's no basis that your spending goes up each and every year with inflation. It's, it's just not based on reality. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Your spending goes down each and every year, even factoring inflation. But that doesn't happen on a specific specificity, like down 2% a year, 2% a year, 2% a year. In fact, what, what Sadipo found is that some people actually spending goes up. And I'm going to get in that here in just a second. It goes down and then it goes up, an unsuspecting expense. Now, other people go down even more than what they're expecting. But and then we have this, and then we what causes these unforeseen expenditures? Is it discretionary, i.e. taking a vacation, uh, being more charitably inclined? Well, we talk about that in my book, Relax and Retire, and we show that more people as they age, they give more contributions, i.e. gifts. Well, you can't be gifting more money if you're running out of money. Those two things are mutually exclusive. So as people age, their gifting goes up, and as such, that proves once and for all that people aren't running out of money. All right, so that would be one. That would be discretionary. You don't have to do that, but you do. The non-discretionary ones are the big deal. That's what will catch you off guard. Now, everyone and their mom is going to think it's health care, and they're just wrong. It's not health care. That's the biggest non-discretionary expense. It's not. It's housing, housing costs. It, how, everything revolves around housing. I can't stress this enough. Anyway, so based on the premises, your, your spending goes down, and on occasion, it'll go back up for some unexpected expense, non-discretionary, and mostly attributed to housing. So let's keep going here. hope that makes sense. We found that on average, annual household spending declined by 2% during retirement, but this decrease is not uniform for all retirees. On average, about one in four retirees experienced at least a 17 to 20% increase in annual spending over a two year period, all right? So about basically 20% of the population of retirees experienced an, an, an increase of uh, about 17 to 20% of their expenditures over a two year time. On the other hand, another one in four experienced a, a decrease of about the same over two-year time. So you're hearing that. So your spending on average goes down, but basically a quarter of the population will have an increase of about 20% over a two-year's time. A quarter of the population will have a decrease of about 20% over two-year's time. All right? Isn't that interesting? I always talk about it. It's always about 15 to 20% of the population, which is the outliers. And, uh, and that would be the people who need long-term care. That would be the people who have big expenditures, like we're going to get to more here. The vast majority of those people are not you, though. And it could be, but it's not. And the way you mitigate that, of course, is with liquidity. Shocking. And we're going to go in that here in just a second. Based on our analysis, there is considerable risk of experiencing large increase in spending at some point in retirement. Okay. So there is a risk that your spending goes down, 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 but you could have a jump for a year or two or three even, um, that there's a risk for that for sure. But it's not, your spending goes up, up, up. And then there's even a risk uh, that you have a bigger expense. That's not how retirement planning models actually work. I mean, that's how the models work, but those are silly because that's not based on reality. Let's keep it going here. Um, Given the range of possible variations in spending increases, the amount of liquid assets retirees should hold in their portfolio uh, to address any shortfall will vary, generally depending on uh, factors such as income. But again, we need liquidity to deal with the choppiness that we might have a spending increase that lasts for two to three, even four years. So your spending is going down, 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 and we want to make sure we have enough liquidity to cover that. Huh, four years of cash. Shocking. Who came up with that? This guy. Let's keep going here. Although spending levels were highly correlated to investable assets, 
uh, spending volatility was not. And that's interesting. This means that retirees with any level of investable assets or income can face a high level of spending volatility. Spending volatility doesn't just mean going up. It also means going down. Just keep that in mind. But in this case, we're just worried about our spending. But are we going to be have a significant unforeseen expenditure that we weren't prepared for? Uh, while an isolated one-time spending increase may be absorbed with minimal impact, spending upticks that persist for a longer time can cause greater concern and may warrant additional planning. Our analysis showed that a significant number of retirees experienced sizable, long-lasting spending increases. For again, for instance, 15% of the households experienced spending increases of 25% uh, or higher, and we're still spending at the same elevated level after four years. So again, we talk about the 15, there's always about 15 to 20% are the outliers. So their spending went down and then went up by 25%, and it kept that way for at least four years. All right. I mean, that's, that's, but even that is different than going up, 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 and then going above 25% and keeping that way for four years. Their spending was declining because on average, the spending declines. It doesn't go up. That's the premise number one. 15% of the population, their spending was going down, and then it went up, increased by 25% for four or more years. And I'm going to show you why that's the case. All right, go here. For some retirees, lifestyle changes could also be necessary to meet new spending needs and minimize the risk of depleting their nest egg. Shocking. Sometimes you got to tighten your belt. Does anyone not know that? <laughs> If we have a 2008, what do you got to do? You got to tighten your belt. Huh. In our study, a larger share of the variation in total spending uh, for retirees was due to changes in non-discretionary spending. Non-discretionary. Overall categories such as home and home-related expenses accounted for the largest share of variation. Distantly followed by health-related expenses and transportation. Huh. Overall, categories for non-discretionary increases in spending were for housing. Tree falls on your place. Your homeowner's insurance gives you a 10% deduct. We got to pay the first $10,000 and $100,000 repair. You don't have the money. Okay. Well, you should have had the money. You got to have liquidity. Uh, you got to get a roof replaced and your insurance won't pay for it because whatever. I mean, there's a million different things. So I'm going to show you what they say is for home issues for non-discretionary. Mortgage, rent, utilities, property taxes, home repairs, and maintenance. Home repairs and maintenance is the big one right there. You, you were just going along fine, 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 and all of a sudden the freaking roof falls off. You're going along fine, fine, fine. You got to get your, a new painting job. Like it cost us $15,000 to paint our houses last year. It's crazy. It was two years ago. This year. Last year. I can't remember. I didn't, I mean, I had that budget. I didn't have it budgeted, but I had, a, you know, thankfully I had an emergency account. I was expecting $15,000. Your garage door opener breaks. I, we had to pay, the first guy who fixed it was a clown, so we had to pay another guy to fix his job, and that cost us all all told about 2,500 bucks for everything. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Again, we had that saved, thankfully. But these things happen all the time, man. All the time. H HVAC goes out. I mean, you gotta replace that. Your fridge goes out. You gotta replace that. Being a homeowner ain't cheap. But it's not health insurance or health care. Don't you see? It's not what everyone makes you afraid about. They say, oh, it's health care. It's not. Fact right here, spending volatility was driven by non-discretionary expenses, and the biggest non-discretionary expense by far, by a factor of 500 or five, I guess whatever that is, was home. Healthcare was 5.3 percent. Uh, home maintenance and repairs was 25 percent. It's crazy. Um, increased spending on non-discretionary expenses might include and require immediate cash. If retirees have insufficient liquid assets to address these needs, they may be forced to ultimately take distributions from their longer-term investment portfolio. 100%. Increased satisfaction was associated with higher discretionary spending. Those who are much less satisfied in 2019 reported... Whoa, whoa, what? What? Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Increased satisfaction was associated with higher discretionary spending. So if you're thinking things are pretty good, you're going to have more discretionary spending, probably on charitable giving and things of that nature. Maybe going to see the uh, the Braves against the Phillies uh, in Game 3 tonight. You maybe fly up to Philadelphia. Why would you want to do that? I don't know, but maybe you would. But if you don't have, if you're not happy with your current plight, uh, 
lot in life, you're probably not going to do that, if that makes sense. You're probably not going to give charitably. And we see people give more charitably as they age, which shows that they're happy. We see 70 80 percent of the population is very content in retirement. Those who are much less satisfied in 2019 reported a 32% drop in discretionary spending, huh? which those who are more satisfied had a 7.4% increase. Hmm. It can be there argued that increased discretionary spending is uh, beneficial. But again, those who are much less satisfied had a 32% drop in their discretionary spending. That means they could tighten the belt when they needed to? Shocking. Who talks about that? Right here, increase in disc discretionary spending was associated with higher financial satisfaction. Yeah, of course. So the more you feel good about your lot in life, the more you're gonna have discretionary spending. The less you feel good about your lot in life, the less discretionary spending. The number one cause for increased volatility in spending though, is non-discretionary, and that's for home, your home. You gotta get your home taken care of. Get all the fixings done before you retire. Don't have a mortgage. You know, get that new HVAC system in there. You know, get the house painted. You know, get your new windows. Do all that while you're working, man. So that way you don't have to do it while you're retired. Because that is a big expense. So what happened? Let me draw it out here for you. If I can, uh, my dirty birds, dirty birds. Charlotte took Liam. Well, I was in uh, Michigan. Charlotte went to go see the Atlanta Hawks play. The Hawks, the Falcons. And they had a blast. And if I don't have a pen here, no, I don't. Oh, man. All right, so I'm going to grab a... And, all right, so we're gonna come over here, my friends. Stay here. Oh, there's my pen, sweet. Yeah, let's just do this. We're gonna come over here. Oh, I got no, We're gonna stay here. I'm gonna show what I'm talking about. So hopefully, you guys can still hear. Where's my pen? Right there. Nice, nice big daddy cane. Big daddy cane on the mic. All right, so we know here's Josh. I'm retiring, and we know my expenditures are dropping on average. 2% a year, all right? They drop on average 2% a year. That's just a fact. This is not debatable, my friends. And that includes adjusting for inflation. It's just, it's not debatable. However, on occasion, my expenses might go up. So it goes like this. Why? Is all housing related. Might go up right there. All housing related. 5% of the time would be for healthcare. 25% of the time is for housing, though. And do they stay up like that? No, they go down. The vast majority of us, it goes down. Why? Because you get your fix, your house fixed. Now, 15% of the time, so let me see, oh, right here. 15% of the time, the, the increase in expenses stays. Hmm, I wonder why. Anyone want to guess? So here we are, there's Josh. It drops by 2% a year. 15% of the time, the increase stays for five, for over four years. Anyone want to guess why that would be? What does that correlate to? It correlates with health care cost. About 15% of the population will have long-term health care costs of some sort. Doesn't mean you go to nursing home necessarily, but those are long-term. So 15% of the time, those costs will go up and they'll stay up uh, for four years because those are the people who go to long-term care facility, most likely, or they have in-home health care like my mom, or they have some kind of need. That's one in eight. I mean, seven and eight don't have that. The rest of those seven and eight are going to have expenditures for a home at some point. No one's saying your long your costs are going to go down each and every year at two percent, just a, specifically like that. No one's saying that. It's going to be volatile, but it's volatile on the way down, not volatile on the way up. So if you're not running your retirement plan based on that, you're you're making a mistake. You just are. Man. Anyway, point again: we want liquidity. You know, we want to save a couple years before we retire. We want some cash for sure. We want liquidity, we want liquidity, we want liquidity. Point two is get all your fixings done before you retire. Get them while you've got this, the cash flow coming in from your work. That way you don't have to rely on your investment portfolio. Get your house in good order. Get your new windows, all that. Do that while you're working. I'm just telling you, man. All right. Love your thoughts. Don't forget, we're going live on Locals tonight. Five bucks a month. You can join the Locals crew. It's going to be fun. We're going to talk about my trip to Michigan. We're going to be taking some questions. Uh, we might have thrown some Hamas-Israel combat stuff because... Uh, there's, uh, I, I won't say much more here. I just, um, it's, uh, it seems very odd to me how this took place. So let's just put that. We might talk about that. It's going to be fun. So join us on Locals. This is in the doobie-doo. Love to hear your thoughts. We'll see you.